afternoon, guys. My name is Chris Jordan. I'm the general manager of Title Boxing Club here in Fishers. Uh, I'm also a uh, personal trainer and group fitness instructor. Uh, today we're going to learn a little bit about our Power Hour class. Uh, it's kind of our flagship of what we do here in the club. Um, say 99% of our members that come in here take the class and uh, get results from it and get healthier and happier from it. Uh, we're going to start off, we're going to do what we need to do prepare equipment-wise. Uh, number one thing is we need to get our hands wrapped up prior to starting our warm-up. Uh, and then we'll get our gloves off and go over some basic technique on the back. So, uh, first off, what we're wearing here are 180 hand wraps. Um, they are about 1069 for the pair when you come into the club. They're washable and reusable. Uh, pretty easy to follow the directions on these. Uh, if you look on there, it has a letter thing to say this side down. Uh, mainly that's just going to go towards your skin. That's why when you get to the end of the wrap, uh, the Velcro is going to be the right spot. So what we're going to do, there's lots of different ways to do it, but I'm going to go the most basic way. We're going to start off, we're going to have our thumb loop hooked around here. I'm going to go two or three times around my wrist. I like to do two times, uh, that way I know I have plenty of material at the end. Uh, but you want them pretty snug, you don't want them loose, obviously you don't want them sliding around. Uh, but you don't want them so tight that your knuckles are turning white before you even get started on your workout. So, uh, we're going to go a couple times down, a couple times up. And I'm going to wrap around my knuckles here. I don't want to be all the way back here. Part of what this is doing is we're not, we don't want to dig into these fingers once we get our verticals going. I'll show you here in a second. So I'm going to come up nice and high on these knuckles. Like I said, two times, maybe three times if you want to go one extra. Two is good for me. But then I'm going to hit back here, go over the heel of the hand, and everything comes back from the thumb. So I'm going to go one time through my pinky, my, my ring finger, tighten that down. And that's why I'm having this up higher. If I took that guy down and went right to my skin, it started uh, it start nagging me here in the back of my tendons, the back of my uh, nerves here. So one time through the finger, one time over the wrist. That locks it in, it's not going anywhere. If you want to make a little knuckle uh, a fish just to make sure it's not too tight, that's good. And then we're just going to continue that over. Next finger set, one wrist. Next finger set, one wrist. And this time, I don't have any more fingers to go through, so instead of that, I'm going to go back over the wrist all the way one more time. And what that does is that locks it in place. If I was to go straight up after I hit that wrist, that would slide up on me and that, my, my wraps would get loose. So, one time around, I'm locked in, and now I'm going to shoot back up to my pinky. I'm just going to lay it under my palm and lay it over my knuckles. And I'm not going to tighten down until I make a fist. Big reason being is if you keep your hand out here and you tighten that sucker down, when you go to make your fist, you're going to feel a grind on your knuckles a little bit. So I'll make my fist first just like I'm going to punch, tighten that down. And then when I open my hand, you'll notice I've almost got a natural fist made right here. So then I'm going to just finish it off right here, one time through the palm. And then I got all that material left over. I just work my way back down the wrist. So I like these straps because they have that little stripe on there. That kind of gives me a good reveal to work with. I don't ever want to cover up that stripe as I'm walking down. And then when I, once I get to the end, I got about 12 inches or so left. I'm just going to work my way back up one time. And now I got one time around the wrist here. And boom. So it gives you good compression in your hand. Kind of locks everything in place there. Uh, and it's also acting kind of like a sock for your uh, hands. So, you know, you don't want getting sweaty hands and have them sliding all around your gloves. It's kind of nasty and it kind of get blisters from it. So that's my first set of wraps. Second one here. Same thing. We're going to repeat on the other side. Now, a lot of times I see um, a lot of individuals, they'll be able to get one of their hands wrapped properly and then they get lost on the other one. Big reason being is because one side, they'll go over the top of the wrist and then the other side, because they want to go in that same circle, they end up going underneath the wrist and then they're backwards. Not wrong doing it that way, but if you're used to going over one way, they will make your hand wraps backwards. So, I'm going to go the, just a little bit quicker on this one, uh, two times down. And I work myself two times. Remember, I'm keeping that, that space in there. I want to be able to see that, that stripe from the previous wrap two times around. And remember, go high up on your knuckles. And also something I uh, wanted to mention, keep your fingers opened up. If you're right here and you wrap your hands up, it is going to get so tight once you get done warming up just because our blood gets going that you're going to have to unwrap your hands and start over again. So as wide as you can hold those fingers, keep that tension on there. Get those two or three wraps in there. And then we're going to work our way back down. Uh, and if you notice, I'm not a very big guy, so I, uh, I, that's why I don't do three times around. I don't want to run out of material when I get to the, my hand wraps. So one time through the pinky, one time over the wrist. Another time over the pinky, or the, the ring finger, and then one time over the wrist. And then once again, now finish off, last finger, wrist. Remember, I don't have any more fingers to go through, so I'm going to go around the wrist all the way one time. Get under my palm here. When I get to the top, I'm going to make a fist like I'm going to punch. And I tighten down. 
and then I naturally, that, it naturally makes my hand kind of hold that fist already. And I work my way down. Once again, I got a little bit of wrap left. I'm leaving that little line of reveal behind. And then once I get about 12 inches, I work my way back up and finish right on the top. If you end up just going around that same spot again and again, uh, your wraps will you'll stack up your wraps and will get loose on you, they'll slide around on you. So that is the uh, one of the proper ways of wrapping hands. Like I said, it's not the only way. There's lots of different styles. Uh, personally for me, I actually have a totally different way I wrap hands, but for simplicity's sakes, that's what we're looking at. Okay. seconds, you know, I'm on my drops. And then I'll transition, okay guys, here in you know, five seconds, we're doing jumping jacks. And then we can hit our jumping jacks. We're doing our jacks, make sure we're getting our hands up top. Don't want to just go right here, let our arms fall to the side, get full range of motion. Um, and then you know, I might transfer into something else. I'm going to go into squats or lunges. Uh, when you're doing your squat, big thing, I see this done wrong all the time. People will come up and they'll literally dive their knees forward and they put all the way in the front of their toes. That is not how we want to do a squat. We want to focus on like we're sitting in a chair. So I'll put all the weight in my heel, my knees will be behind my toes, and I'm sitting back, my hips are loaded, my focus is on my quads here, and then as I come up, I want to drive off my heels. So not putting any weight in my toes in my squats, not coming up here and pushing, sitting back and up. So I, and with any of my moves, I want to inhale as I'm coming down. Exhale as I'm coming out of my squat. Same thing with my lunges. If I'm gonna lunge forward, I want my torso up nice and tall. That back knee's about two inches off the ground. The weight's my heel. I'm not pushing forward here. I go straight down and push myself straight back up. So I lunge out and then right back and forth. Okay? Uh, those are some of the basic moves that we do uh, with our legs on, on, the, on the ground. Um, we have, like, have some mountain climbers, we have some push ups. On your push ups, big thing is, you want to keep your eyes, body, ears, everything's on the same line. As we come down, we're nice and straight. And as we come up, we're nice and straight. We don't want to do this. We don't want to do the head. We don't want to crane our neck down. We want to leave with our chest and act like we're pushing the floor away. Uh, and that can take us right into our mountain climber. So, with a mountain climber, so you're just going to bring that knee up to your chest and you're going to alternate each side. So, as you kind of speed it up, just alternating those knees back and forth. If you need to, if we take you to the ground and you got shoulder issues or whatnot, you can use your heavy bag, okay? So whether we're doing push-ups, you can use your heavy bag, do the push-ups on your heavy bag, or mountain climbers, push that bag out, you can drive those knees up for your mountain climbers. So uh, we've got lots of basic exercises that we do, but we can modify about everything too. So if you need to, don't be intimidated by, oh, you know, I got a bad shoulder or I got a bad knee. We can make it work for you. We can help you out with that. So um, lots of different age ranges. We got eight years and older that come in here. Um, we got a gal that's in her 70s with lupus that she's fighting right now. She's actually off a lot of her meds from it and she's feeling great. Uh, she cannot do a plank when she first came in. She is now planking for a good 30 seconds now on her elbow and toes. Perfect form. So, 
Um, when we get warmer into the warm up, we'll have some shadow boxes in there. Um, it's just nice and loose. You know, we might do some uppercuts, uh, nice soft uppercuts. When we uh, when we're doing our uppercuts, it's kind of a scooping motion. And if you notice, my entire body's working. So when I'm doing uppercuts, it's not just my arms, but I'm actually acting like I'm just kind of scooping that ground up. And every time I punch, I'm kind of putting that pressure on that toe I'm punching. So not only are my arms moving, but my hips are moving with it. I'm driving off my feet. Biggest thing to help me with punching is I think like I'm gonna jump. If I'm gonna jump into something, I'm gonna push off that toe to jump into it, okay? Um, when we get done with our warm up, at that point we'll get our gloves on, we'll have about a minute to do that, we'll grab some water, and then we'll get over into our heavy bag work. Sideways, 
my jab is going to be a lot further away, and now I'm out of position to throw my other punches. So, all throughout, I want to make sure I keep those toes pointed towards the bag, almost full extension on my jab, and that point I'm going to rotate, I got to get the power in it. Uh, my cross hand is going to be around right hand from right footed. Basically, my cross is the same type of mechanic as my jab with my arm. That cross, I'm going to take that drink of water, I'm going to dump it out. I'm going to take a drink, I'm going to dump it out. Now, usually like with any other sport, if you're playing baseball or whatnot, your power is in the back. So if, you, uh, if you're going to be a right-hander, you're going to throw with your right hand, your right foot's in the back on baseball, bowling, you're going to throw from that right hand on the bowl. Uh, so with the cross, big thing is, my jab hand is that lead hand, so it's a little bit weaker of a punch. That cross, I can put a lot of power into it. Easiest way to remember to do that is I'm going to dig my toe in the ground, either like you're putting the fire out or you're squishing a bug. So I'm going to squish that bug. And once again, my elbows are tight. I don't want to flare up here. I don't want to knock on the door. Okay, now another thing is I don't want to scoop up. You start dropping your hands, your punches almost have this kind of this lat raise kind of uh, motion to it as it pushes straight in and straight out. If you remember, you take a rubber band, you stick that rubber band on your nose, you hook it around your thumbs. That way you throw your punch out. You're always bringing that hand back up to your nose, okay? Uh, so that's my jab, my cross. My lead, my jab, my reach, my cross. Remember, everything should be generated from your hips. If you feel, don't feel your hips working, this is what you're doing right here. Your legs are flat. You're not getting out of the way you could. Okay? Um, now, with our hooks, this is really important with our toes pointing forward. Because once again, we're talking about that, that jab hand here, my distance. If I was to turn my feet away from my bag, and my jab's still connecting, but I get to my hook, I am nowhere near that bag on my hook. So the only way to get there is I'm going to bleed into it, putting a lot of pressure on my knee. Now I'm out of balance. So, once again, keeping that front point toe there, that way when I throw my hook, I'm going to dig that toe in just like I dug that, that back toe in my cross or squish that bug. I'm just going to, it's like I'm going to turn around and walk away. Turn around and walk away essentially. My toe's in the ground, I'm digging in. I don't want to roll that toe over, okay? If I roll my toe over, I lose all my power. So, dig that toe in. Good, and it comes right back. If you notice, my arm doesn't really travel very far. I'm not coming back here. Not doing that. Don't do that. That'll hurt yourself. You don't want to slap the bat. Okay? Turn the hip. Come in. Um, I also I'm almost like we got to take a chunk out of the back. You got to scoop a little chunk out of the back. Okay? When I'm throwing it, I want my thumb to be up, not down. There's nothing wrong with throwing that type of hook. That is an inside hook, though. And you're just kind of setting yourself up to hit that pinky a little bit more. Plus, this is a lot less stable on my shoulder. Throw an inside hook on the heavy bag as opposed to turning the outside. I got a lot more stability that way. And so when I'm throwing that in, it gives my little more distance. Boom. So right on the bag, I don't have to throw it around the bag either. Sometimes I see people feel like they gotta reach around, don't gotta reach around, come right in front of you. So if you notice my shoulder, my elbow, try and stay right in line. If you start pulling your elbow back right here, that's a good way to tear your shoulder up. So bring that shoulder back up. It's literally just raising that hand up and turn that in. Right there, and we bring it right back. Okay? I'll honor uppercuts. We do not want to go upwards on the bag. If you go up on the bag, there will be at one point in time, you'll skip up and you will hit yourself in the nose. So, on a vertical bag, don't do vertical uppercuts. Be more straight in, and boom. So once again, just like I brought the punch, I'm going to dig my toes on the ground. I'm going to throw a left upper, I'm going to dig a left upper on the ground, my hips thrown into it, I'm digging that toe. My right upper, my right upper is digging into it. So, once again, we just don't want to scoop them. I say no scooping, so we don't want to come back here and roll with it, okay? That's not good for our shoulder, just like bringing a hook real far back isn't good for our shoulder. Plus, we miss out on our legs. If we're throwing uppercuts like this, we're not getting as much of a workout as we can. Same thing, we're throwing hooks like this, we're not getting as much of that as we can. So we want our uppers, we want to dig in, dig those toes in, hooks on the same thing, dig those toes into it, dig those toes into it, okay? So if you put it all together, we have a jab, cross, hook, and uppercut. You don't always have to throw a lead hook, you don't always have to throw a rear uppercut, but those are our basics and we play everything off of there. When we're into our backgrounds, we might have different combinations that we do. We'll build up a combination. Maybe 30 seconds, we're on that jab, okay? Jab that back, 30 seconds. All right, now we're gonna add to it, jab cross. Jab cross. Then another 30 seconds, add that hook on there. Jab cross hook. Jab cross hook. And then finish it off, jab cross hook uppercut. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good, so we'll just, you know, every 30 seconds we'll add on to it. Uh, we have some rounds where we do a reaction round. So, all right, everybody, we're on jab crosses. When I say hook, give me a hook. Ready, hook. And we're back on that jab cross. Or we're going to be on your toes. All right, guys, I say a number. Give me that many punches. Ready, three. One, two, three. Back on our toes. So, um, not all of the punches can be in our 
combinations, not having to overthink about too much. Um, we kind of base things off speed, off power, off reactor drills, um, and then you know put the ride in that way. So we're not going to throw a 20 punch combination at you where it's like jab, cross, hook, upper, upper, hook, cross, hook, like upper, upper, whatever, you know, none of that stuff. So keep our punches simple, you know, maybe four punch combinations, no more than that. Um, as we get done with that round, we're going to do a burnout. So the last 30 seconds of that three minute round, we're going to not stop punching. Okay, it might be chat cross speed. All right, guys, not stop chat cross for 30 seconds. Mainly just getting that cardio up at the end. You don't just want to roll yourself in. You don't want to 
want to do this, we're going to do our crunch. All I have to do is put pressure on our neck. I like to pretend like I'm going to put my nose, my nose, my forehead, and my chest up at the ceiling. So it's like I'm peeling my back off the ground. I come back, I come up, I'm peeling my back up. Now I'm engaging my core. I'm not putting any stress on my neck. I can put it if I want to. I just come up and then right back down. If you want to turn into a full sit up, you can take it to a full sit up. Just try not to throw our arms up to it the best we can. Keeping our feet on the floor. Uh, the closer you bring your heels to you, is the harder it's going to make that move. If you need to modify it, bring your feet over here and stick your feet in your bag, and you can modify it that way. Bring yourself all the way up. So a lot of the moves we're doing these setup variations. Feel free to bring your feet over on the bag into the bag. Uh, if you wanted to, you could always add the weight with the medicine ball and setup. Stick the medicine ball in your chest. You can do it that way. Um, uh, bicycle kicks or bicycle crunches. Uh, this one I see a lot of times people will do incorrectly. Uh, but the two main thing is, is I want to get good extension of my legs and I want to keep my shoulders off the ground. So every time I bring one knee back, I'm going to act like I'm bring that shoulder up to that knee and then I'm going to alternate and alternate. A lot of times I'll see people just kind of spin right here, really if you can, get that leg stuck out there and extend those legs out. Okay? Um, on your, on, your, on your plank positions, uh, just like our push up, we want to have a nice flat body on the knees. Uh, I always pretend like I got a broomstick that's going through my shoulders, my hips, and my knees. So you either do a, a straight arm plank, or a lot of times by this point in the class, you know, arms are pretty tired, so I'll, I'll go ahead and you know, do them on an elbow plank. The main thing is we just want a straight line. We don't want to have a hip sagging, we don't want to make a TP with our body. So, like I said, that broomstick, nice straight line, tighten your core up, and we're just holding our plank right here. You got lots of variation. You can do a side plank, you can do a reverse plank, and like I said, you can do that push up plank where you put your arms straight out. If you need to modify any of these, off your knees, hips are flat, you know, same thing, side plank, you modify it, knees are bent, hips are flat. So, whatever version you need to. Uh, overall, I mean, really, that's going to be what a lot of our core work is. It's just variations with exercises. So, nothing too fancy. Um, it's moves that everyone can do with a little modification if needed. Uh, and there's certainly ways, you know, adding mess ball to make it more difficult. Maybe instead of doing just a regular plank, maybe we do a, a little more of an unstable plank or have a medicine ball underneath your hand or something. Or put it on your feet. So. Usually, if you can hold a plank for 30 seconds, you can always try and increase that intensity and, you know, add one of those aspects to it. So, uh, we finish off the class. We have that 15 minutes before at the end. Uh, by that time, you take an hour long workout, burned a lot of calories, got a good sweat going. Uh, and then we finish off with about five minutes of stretching just to get our Put right down, get some of that black gas wash out of our muscles, and then go on with our day, energized and happy.